What is going on guys, welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn about format modifiers for F strings and advanced string formatting in Python. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to talk about F string format modifiers in this video today. Now, F strings are the go to way to format strings in Python. String formatting in general means taking variables, taking expressions, and formatting the results into a string. So, for example, I might have, for those of you who don't know what F strings are, we might have here two variables name equals Mike, age equals 25. And now I want to have a string that says Mike is 25 years old, but I don't want to do that. Uh, as a constant here. So I don't want to just have the string Mike is 25 years old, I want to keep it dynamic because name and age might change. So what I can do here, uh, without F strings is I can just do string concatenation, this would be uh, the stupid way to do it, so to say so I could do name, plus and then is plus and then I would have to do typecasting string of age, plus years old to get the message, Mike is 25 years old. Now string formatting is just taking a string and formatting these values in dynamically. And we can do that with a format function, we can do that with a percentage sign. Uh, but we can also do that with F strings, which is what we're going to focus on today. So what we can do here is we can say F, and then followed by quotations to define a string, and then I can just use curly brackets inside of the F string to use variables. So I can say name is and then I can say age years old, which is of course, better in terms of readability, it's also nice because I don't have to do any typecasting. Uh, and you can see we get the same result, Mike is 25 years old. And in this video today, now we're going to focus on the so called format uh, specifiers or modifiers, which basically allow us to change how things are represented. And there are a bunch of them, we're not going to cover, I think all of them, but most of them. And we're going to start right away with the float formatting, which is quite simple, probably you have um, have worked with, uh, with it before. So let's say, for example, I have uh, a float, what could be a float, let's say a weight in kilograms, Mike, uh, might be 80.65784 kilograms, maybe some precise uh, machine put that number out. And maybe I want to say here in the end also is uh, eight years old and weighs. And then I want to say, weight kilograms, right? The problem is maybe I don't want to see uh, all these decimal places, I want to get this rounded, and I don't want to use a round function. How can I do this? This is very basic, probably all guys, uh, all of you guys know this, we can just append here a colon, and we can say point to f to say up to two decimal places, this would give us 80.66. Uh, we could also say up to four decimal places. Um, and we can also say up to 40 decimal places, and then we would even get here. Uh, the floating point representation error. But I think if I say something else like six, five, we can get a bunch of zeros, and then we get the uh, error in the end. If you don't know what this is, I have a video on this channel where I basically show what was it why 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 is not 0 0.3. You can check that video out if you want uh, to understand why this is the case. Uh, but we can format the decimal places like this. So this is quite basic. I think most people know that uh, we can also do percentage formatting. So let's say I have um, another value here, maybe, I don't know, success rate in some sport, or win rate, let's say win rate in some sport or some game. And I want to say that Mike has a win rate of 67%. What I can do with this is, of course, I can say, and wins. And then I can say win rate, um, win rate of the time, or win rate, yeah, win rate of the time, and then I would get 0 0.67. But I can also format this as a percentage by saying colon and then 0.2%. And then you can see we get here, Mike is 25 years old and wins 67% of the time. So we can take values like this, and we can format, um, we can format them as percentages. And we can also do that here with different decimal places if necessary. So if I say that we have a more complex number here, or a longer number, we can also uh, display more decimal places. So that's quite nice. Uh, what else can we do? We can also do a bunch of formatting with numbers in general. Now it doesn't make a lot of sense to do that with the age, I'm still going to show you here how it works with the age just because it's a number. Uh, and I don't want to come up with a fancy example here, we basically have um, the possibility to display this in different um, number systems. 
Uh, so we can say h now isn't a decimal system. I want to display it as a hex value. So I can say colon x to display this as uh, a hex value. Now you can see it's 19. Why is it 19? Because in hex, uh, one nine basically equals 25. If I change this to something like uh, maybe uh, 63, we should get three f. So you can see here that we get the hexadecimal uh, representation. I can also use uppercase X to show that this is uh, to, to get the uppercase representation in the hexadecimal system. And I can do the same thing with the octal system. So I can say O um, to get the octal representation. In this case, 77 is 63. Uh, we can also do binary, which can be useful at times. So here, uh, 63 is just a bunch of ones. If I change this to 64, we will have ones and zeros. So one and zeros. Um, yeah, so if you ever need to take a number and represent it as binary hexadecimal octal number, you can do that uh, by just putting an X an O or a B after the colon. Uh, we can also get the scientific notation. So we can say here E to get the scientific notation of the H which is here with this um, with this E representation and plus some exponent. Um, yeah, that that can be useful for scientific purposes. Now, what's also interesting, and oftentimes very useful, if you have maybe some financial application, you might want to get uh, separators, uh, 1000 separators, because you have maybe some, some stuff like net worth, Mike has a lot of money. And Mike, Mike's net worth is this and right now I cannot tell you what this number is, maybe that's a little bit too much. Um, but to understand what this number is, maybe it makes sense to have some separators here. So in this case, uh, that's a bit too much. Let's go with with this. So this would be $63 billion, let's say. And it's hard to see that if you just have it like this. So what we can do is we can take the net worth. So and is worth, and then I can use the net worth dollars, actually the dollars, I think, are formatted before this. There you go. So let's remove the scientific notation here um, is worth this number and it's not very readable. So what we can do is we can say here that we want to use separators for the thousands. And all we have to do is we have to say comma, uh, or actually colon comma. So now you can see we get this representation, we can also use a different character, we can use underscore. As you can see, if for some reason you like that because comma is maybe reserved for something else. Uh, and we can also do this based on the locale. So I can actually say here, because in Europe, or I don't know if in all of Europe, but in Germany, Austria, what we do is we separate uh, the thousands with points and commas are actually used for decimal places. So in, uh, in the US, and I think also in Britain, what you do is you say, um, you have maybe a 1000.45. It's written like this. And in my country or in Germany, and maybe in the rest of Europe as well, what you do is you say, this would be 1000. And then you would say 0.45 like this. So it's just flipped. And depending on your locale, this is different. So what you can do is you can say import locale. And you can say locale set locale LC numeric, and then you can specify your region. So in my case, we could say de de dot utf dash eight. So this would take Germany de stands for Germany. And uh, now I can just say instead of using a specific separator, I can just say n. So colon n. And then you can see we get exactly that these are the separators. And if I say here, something else. Uh, okay, that's a bit too much. Okay, now it's displaying it as a scientific notation. Uh, but yeah, this is how you you um, can adjust the separator based on the locale. Um, now, the good thing is we can also combine these things or actually one thing that I want to show you before because this is actually something that I need quite often to format things. Oftentimes, you will want to use uh, leading zeros or zero padding. So you might have something like uh, usually you want to do this with dates. So you might have day, um, day of the month, and you might have something like seven, and you don't want to display seven as seven, you want to display it as zero seven. So how do you do that? Now I'm going to get rid of these values here, we're just going to do it here now with the uh, I'm going to say here value equals, and let's say, or actually, we have the date, let's use the date. 
Um, what we want to do is we want to say month maybe is also six. And we want to display it as 06. And then we have year and year, let's say it's 2023 or something. Uh, so to display this date, what we can do is we can say day point month point year. And then the problem is you get seven, six, 2023. And if you want to have leading zeros, what you have to do is you have to just say colon zero two colon zero two, which basically will give you zero seven zero six 2023. So this is oftentimes useful. And of course, you can also say 07 to get seven leading zeros. It's often nice if you want to have a specific amount of padding, and then you want to fill this space up if it doesn't, if it isn't filled up automatically, you want to fill it up with zeros. This is just a nice formatting thing. Uh, and of course, what I wanted to say is you can combine all of these things. So you can say I want to have the zero padding, I want to have this as a hexadecimal. So in this case, uh, seven is the same in decimal and hexadecimal. But if I change this maybe to something like uh, 16, we get here 10, uh, because it's hexadecimal. Um, but you still get the leading zero. So you can combine that you can also say that you want to have this as binary, but you also want to separate it with underscores. So let's maybe choose a larger number, then you get this, you get the binary representation, but with separators here. So that's also an option. Uh, you can combine all of these formatting options. Now, let's move on, uh, move on to something called width formatting. So let's say we want to maybe use a table or something. Let's say we have a sentence as an example here, the sentence is going to be uh, each column has a width of 10 It's now going to just be a sentence that we want to format as a table. And the table is going to be an empty string. And we're going to say for word in sentence split on white spaces. What we want to do is we want to say table plus equals and then we want to use uh, the word, but we want to use 10 here as a format modifier, meaning that we're going to fill up uh, the 10 uh, the, the 10 characters per line. So we're going to say here, print table. Actually, uh, yeah, each column, this is not line by line, this is column by column. So you can see here, each column has a width of 10. So you can see we have every time 10 characters space, even if we don't need it. So this is a nice thing to format tables. Because then of course, you can have multiple rows, and you would have a nice, uh, nicely structured table there. Uh, you can also do string alignment, which means uh, you can also align strings to the right to the left. And you can basically if you have here now, uh, more space than you need for the a you can say it has to be left aligned, has to be right aligned, center aligned. And this can be done by just using, for example, in this case, for right alignment, you can say greater than or closing angle bracket, we can also say left angle bracket to align to the left. Um, and what was the centering? For the center, we use the exponentiation operator. So that would be centering. And we can do that with 20, we can do that with 10, we can do that with 500, you can just choose a number. And then you're going to get the formatting. Now, here we have line breaks. So the formatting is messed up a little bit. Uh, but you get the idea. Now, I want to copy here from my prepared code, because I don't want to type this out now, it would just waste time, I want to copy an example of what this uh, could be used for. So let me just copy this here. Um, to the clipboard. That is that and we need some words. I just have Yeah, let's define a table words or not a table a list words. It's going to be hello. There are these. These are words. And actually, you should probably have items here. But you can see that you can use here the fill characters, so you can say I need 20 uh, characters, I want to have it left aligned. And if there is space left, fill it up with a certain character. So we can use a point, uh, or a dot, we can use um, an underscore, we can use a comma, we can use 
a hashtag. We can use any character basically to fill up the space. And this can be used to make these price lists, for example, so we can say one, two, three, and then we can use uh, some some value here in the formatting. And we can say, okay, align it to the left 20 space uh, 20 characters of space and use dots to fill up the rest of the space. So that is one use for that. Um, and finally, what I want to also show you here is formatting dates, this can be quite useful, we can say import date time, and we can say, for example, the current point in time is date time dot date time dot now. So this is the current timestamp. And we can now get specific values from the date. So we can say here print. Um, and then f string current, first of all, I can just print it like that. This is the default formatting. But I can also say I'm only interested in the year of the date in the year of this timestamp. So I can say percent y to get only the year 2023. I can also do the same thing with a lowercase m to get the month, I can do the same thing with a lowercase d to get the day, I can do the same thing with an uppercase h to get the current hour, uh, I can do the same thing with lower uh, uppercase m to get the minute uppercase s to get the second and uh, j lowercase j to get the day of the year. Now more of those modifiers exist, you can look them up in the documentation, you can also get uh, day of the week and week name and stuff like that. But those are some examples of what you can do. Now you can also combine this into your custom date formatting. So you can say I want to have the year followed by a dash followed by the month followed by a dash followed by the day, then you would get this and you can then also say, uh, you want to have the hour colon, you want to have the minute colon, you want to have the second, for example, you can also do it like that. So you can customize your date formatting here manually. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.